Division engineer tasks can be broken into four basic functions, which involve mobility, counter mobility, survivability, and general engineer support activities. Mobility involves clearing and opening the way so that combat units can maneuver on the battlefield. Mobility tasks include filling craters, removing blowdown, clearing abati, traversing ditches, breaching and bypassing minefields, providing bridges, ferries, and boats, maintaining roads, fords, and crossing sites, lifting booby traps, supporting EOD operations, and clearing debris, barricades, and rubble. Counter-mobility involves the reinforcement of terrain or the creation of artificial obstacles to delay, disrupt, or kill the enemy. It encompasses planning, construction, and the logistic and transportation efforts associated with its accomplishment. Counter-mobility tasks mainly include point targets, such as road craters, abati, rubbling, mining, and demolitions of bridges, utilities, or facilities, and linear targets, such as anti-tank ditches, minefields, and routing. Survivability involves the development of protective positions through extensive digging assistance for critical weapons, command and support systems, in the main defense and covering force areas, as well as reinforcement of strong points and OPs, assistance in the construction of wire obstacles, reinforcement of defensive positions, improving observation and fields of fire, and developing natural obstacles. The last function entails general engineer support, which comprises general engineering activities performed rearward of the forward brigades. General support tasks include construction, repair, and maintenance of main supply routes, construction of protective works for ammunition and POL storage sites, providing water points, support to decontamination operations, and the provision of engineer intelligence. Engineers must receive advance warning of pending operations so as to get on with issuing preliminary orders, reconnaissance activities, and the ordering of stores and materials. They must also be included in reconnaissance groups at all command levels. The execution of engineer tasks requires the careful and timely deployment of engineer resources. The most efficient results are achieved by centralized control at the highest practical engineer level. This allows engineer units to be employed where the work is rather than being restricted to working within a particular formation boundary. Once work begins on an engineer task, it should be completed by the same unit. Discontinuity causes delays, lost time, and wasted effort. There are seldom enough combat engineers to conduct all tasks required of them in a given period of time. The priorities for engineer work must be decided between engineer and formation commanders at the highest possible level. Engineers can be redeployed from lower priority tasks if the situation warrants. An engineer commander carries out the functions of commanding his unit, advising the tactical commander and acting as the link between the formation and the next higher engineer commander. His location is dependent upon the relative importance of the tasks underway and upon those being planned. In situations when he cannot be with the supported commander, an engineer liaison officer will be co-located at that commander's headquarters. The command of division engineer units is normally centralized under the commander division engineers with its elements assigned to a specific area or tasking. If its elements are decentralized in support of the brigades, the CDE retains technical control of their activities. The CDE controls all engineer activity within division boundaries. He is also the engineer advisor to the division commander. The division engineer group is organized and equipped to provide the minimum continuous engineer support required by the division. 
The group consists of a headquarters, two field engineer regiments, two armored engineer squadrons, and an engineer support regiment. Headquarters Division Engineers has G3 and G4 staff branches, headed up by the Chief of Staff. It is normally co-located with an engineer unit, which provides for its administrative support and protection. The Chief of Staff organizes the day-to-day -day functions of the engineer headquarters and details the operational activities of units of the group. He is responsible for the coordination and execution of the engineer plan. The G3 is the principal operations staff officer. He directs and supervises the G2 and G3 staff, which completes the detailed work on engineer plans and orders, and directs the production of engineer intelligence. Included in his staff are the G3 operations, who controls the engineer command net, keeps the battle map updated, maintains records, files, reports and returns, and mans the step up for the headquarters. G3 signals, who is responsible for all communications within the division engineer group. The G3 plans is responsible for the preparation of plans, orders and instructions, and a liaison section. Headquarters division engineers makes extensive use of liaison officers who carry orders and information to the engineer units. Liaison detachments are established at division main and rear headquarters and at each brigade. These LOs represent the commander at various headquarters, but do not act in an advisory capacity. The G2 staff is responsible for the collection, collation and dissemination of intelligence with emphasis on terrain analysis and enemy techniques in obstacle construction and booby trapping. They maintain accurate records and maps of all obstacles in the division area and are responsible for developing an engineer intelligence collection plan for use by engineers and other arms units. They also provide a liaison staff to the intelligence collection and analysis center. The G4 staff is responsible for the provision of ammunition, explosives, defense stores and engineer resources to the division engineer units for the preparation of administrative orders and instructions and for coordinating and controlling the dumping of resources in support of engineer activities. They also affect liaison with division transport agencies and coordinate personnel, vehicle and equipment replacements. The field engineer regiments provide combat engineer support to the brigades and to division troops. They are manpower oriented and depend on the engineer support regiment for heavy equipment assistance. Each regiment is made up of a headquarters, three field squadrons and an administration squadron. The field squadrons have a small headquarters and three field troops. Each troop has four field sections and a multi-purpose engineer vehicle section. A troop is normally affiliated with a battle group and the troop commander acts as the engineer advisor to the battle group commander. The troop warrant officer runs the troop command post, monitors the activities of the field sections and looks after the troop administration. As the troop's most experienced field engineer, he is also responsible for the on-site control of troop-sized tasks. The troop commander is also assisted by the troop recce sergeant who conducts engineer reconnaissance for the troop. The troop's equipment includes two cargo vehicles. One carries ammunition and demolition materials, while the other transports stores which are used by the field sections. Each field section operates from an APC equipped with a dozer blade and an earth auger. In addition, the vehicle carries hand tools, demolition accessories, mine detectors, as well as a chainsaw, a jackhammer, and similar type tools. The multi-purpose engineer vehicle section is equipped with two MPEVs, which provide the troop with an additional digging, earth moving, and bulk lift capability. The administrative squadron provides the required maintenance, supply, transport, medical, and messing support to the regiment. Maintenance troop provides first-line repair and recovery capability for the regiment, 
and spare parts for both tracked and wheeled vehicles. The supply section carries the regimental maintenance load of supply items, such as clothing, personal equipment, and weapons. The medical section comprises the unit medical station and three tracked ambulances. The transport section administers unit transport resources and carries the regiment's reserve portion of the basic fuel load. And the messing section provides hot meals as often as the tactical situation will allow. The engineer heavy equipment resources of the division are provided from the engineer support regiment. They remain under the centralized control of CDE and are allocated to the field engineer regiments for specific operations or for periods of time. The support regiment includes a resources squadron, an equipment squadron, and an administrative squadron. The resources squadron provides the engineer stores and services required by the field engineer regiments. Its subunits include a water supply troop, a construction troop, a bridging troop, a mine countermine troop, and an engineer stores troop. The water supply troop consists of 14 detachments, each capable of producing 1,500 gallons per hour. Normally, three water supply detachments are placed in support of each brigade, and the remainder are allocated to support the division troops. The construction troop provides the construction engineering services required by the division. It can provide carpentry, plumbing, and electrical services. It also can supply supervisory personnel to larger projects. The bridging troop holds two sets of 31 meter medium girder bridge, tactically loaded on trucks and trailers. This bridge is constructed by subunits of the field engineer regiments and is primarily used to replace bridges laid by the armored bridge layers. The troop also carries 60 assault boats and 10 cargo boats. Finally, the troop holds four sections of Class 60 trackway to assist entry and exit at water crossing sites. The mine countermine troop carries the equipment necessary to support both minefield laying and breaching operations. The mine laying section has six mechanical mine layers, each having its own racks and arming tables. They carry a basic load of 3,000 mines. In addition, the section holds six scatterable mine dispensing systems and minefield marking stores. The countermine section holds all mechanical and explosive minefield breaching systems, primarily for use by the armored engineer squadrons in support of breaching operations. This includes 16 trailer-mounted giant viper charges, four sets of mine rollers, and 12 sets of mine plows. The engineer stores troop carries engineer and defense stores, as well as rapid demolition devices, cratering kits, and explosives used by the field engineer regiments. Its equipments include air compressors and pneumatic tools. The troop also includes a diving section, which holds equipment for 16 combat divers. These items are drawn by the field engineer regiments for use by their diver trained sappers on a task required basis. The equipment squadron provides vehicles and heavy engineer equipment to the division engineer group. It includes a dozer troop, a dump troop, and two excavator troops. The dozer troop consists of four sections, each with an APC dozer, four high-speed armored dozers, a low-speed armored dozer, and a 20-ton tractor trailer. The dozers may be deployed independently to support combat units, but normally work with sappers of the field engineer regiments. The dump troop equipment includes 24 dump trucks and 12 front-end loaders. These are employed primarily in road construction and maintenance tasks. They may also be employed in support of mine dumping programs. The two excavator troops function in support of the field engineer regiments. Their equipments include four trenchers, four light and 12 heavy excavators, 
which are mainly used for digging in command posts, crew served weapons pits, battle trenches, and aid stations. Each troop also has four graders, used primarily for route maintenance, LZ construction, and for improvements of exits and approaches at ferry and bridge sites. Six low-speed armored dozers, hauled by tractor-trailer combination, and a 30-ton hydraulic crane. The administrative squadron provides the administrative services for the regiment. Its organization and equipment are similar to the administrative squadrons of the field engineer regiments, except that it has additional MRTs and refueling vehicles to support its varied worksite locations. The two armored engineer squadrons are identically organized, each having five armored engineer troops equipped with two armored bridge layers and two armored engineer vehicles, an engineer support troop and a service support troop. The AVLBs provide the division with assault bridging capability. The bridge can span a 20 meter gap and can carry a 50 ton load. The AVLB has the same armor protection as the main battle tank, allowing it to move with armored formations. It also carries spare bridges and fascines. The AEV allows sappers to conduct engineer tasks under fire in support of operations. It's equipped with attachments allowing it to excavate or move earth, breach anti-tank ditches and remove abati, scarify road surfaces, clear rubble and fields of fire, and prepare riverbanks for water crossings. The AEV can be used as a demolition firing point and to launch lane clearing charges during minefield breaching operations. The engineer support troop provides vehicles and stores lift to sustain the armored engineer troops. The service support troop looks after the normal combat service support needs of the squadron and provides the required MRTs to service the squadron's AEVs and AVLBs. Sappers are capable of conducting many tasks and are a valuable resource. They remain soldiers first and engineers second and are prepared to fight as infantry if required. Their reliance on a continuing supply of equipment and stores and their vulnerability when conducting engineer tasks are factors which must be considered in any operational plan.